Keys to another dimension? Why eating these poisonous mushrooms will make you see mysterious tiny people? Welcome to the Eye of Truth. You've probably played Super Mario Brothers. Mario eats a mushroom and gets big, but then gets hit by an enemy and shrinks back in size. Rumor has it that this mechanic was based on a type of mushroom called boletes. Delicious, fragrant, and soft, bolete mushrooms are seen as delicacies in various countries all over the world. They're often used as ingredients in cooking, especially in Finland, Scandinavia, and in southwestern China. Bolete mushrooms are also poisonous. Eating one without cooking it properly can cause symptoms of food poisoning, including dizziness, vomiting, and diarrhea. They can also cause hallucinations. Regions where many of these mushrooms are harvested often see a spike in emergency hospitalizations during the summer, which is when bolete mushrooms are picked. Interestingly, most patients hospitalized from bolete poisoning experience the same kind of hallucination. Once a patient begins to feel ill, he then starts to see many tiny people appearing from nowhere, who then proceed to run around on the desk or dance on the bed. These tiny people are around 20 to 30 centimeters in height, but otherwise look identical to humans. 80% of patients who see these tiny people report seeing more than 100 of these creatures running around. Most patients experiencing this are completely conscious, and some have described it as viewing an extremely realistic VR movie. It certainly left quite an impression on many of them. The interesting thing about this is that hallucinations caused by chemical compounds in the body tend to vary from person to person. That's not the case with bolete poisoning, as most patients experience the same hallucination of seeing tiny people. One theory is that these tiny people are actually life forms from another dimension, and that bolete poisoning allows you to see them. Of course, scientists also continue to research this phenomenon. In this video, I'll be covering these curious hallucinations, including the latest scientific research on the phenomenon. I'll also look into why these mysterious tiny people almost always appear during these hallucinations. When you stop and think about it, mushrooms are kind of weird. Unlike plants, they don't take in water and carbon dioxide and grow in sunlight. Unlike animals, they don't grow by eating and digesting plants and animals. Mushrooms inhabit dead plants and animals, and they survive by secreting digestive fluids onto their hosts in order to break them down into the nutrition they need. Mushrooms are therefore neither plants nor animals, but belong to the fungus kingdom. Most mushrooms are poisonous and must be prepared properly prior to eating. Although boletes are poisonous, they can be safely eaten as long as they're heated properly and are a legitimate cooking ingredient in most regions. However, they can cause food poisoning if not prepared properly or eaten raw, which can cause hallucinations. These hallucinations are caused by a chemical compound called psilocybin, when this compound enters the body, it's broken down by hydrolysis into psilocin. Psilocin has a structure similar to serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter found in the human brain. Because of its similar structure, psilocin can bond with serotonin receptors, which are supposed to bond only with serotonin. This unfortunate combination can cause a range of symptoms, including rapid heartbeat, dilution of the pupils, elevated body temperature, and headaches. If a large amount of psilocin enters the body and bonds with serotonin receptors, it can cause what's called a neuronal avalanche. This is where a chain reaction occurs within neural circuitry, plunging the brain into chaos and causing such symptoms as visual and auditory hallucinations or synesthesia. A research team at Imperial College London conducted an experiment where they gave psilocybin into test subjects and then used fMRI to study their brain activity. This map shows the normal neural circuitry of a subject prior to the test. The subject was then given 2 milliliters of psilocybin. Here's the result. As you can see here, ingesting psilocin causes new neurotransmission pathways to appear, creating new connections between nerve cells. This can cause some strange things. For example, if a nerve cell related to smell is connected with a cell related to sight, it could cause the person to see a certain color when smelling something. Similarly, if a cell related to hearing is connected with a cell related to touch, it could cause a sensation on the skin when some noise is heard. 
This explains how psilocybin found in bow leads can cause hallucinations, but it doesn't explain everything. None of the subjects who received psilocybin during this experiment saw tiny people. We understand why hallucinations occur, but not why people poisoned by bow leads see these strange creatures. I mentioned this earlier in the video, but one theory is that these tiny people actually exist in a separate world or dimension from ours. When we eat a bolete mushroom, something occurs that allows us to see into their world. This sounds like a very paranormal explanation, but I think there's some truth to it. First of all, our so-called real world is not objective reality. We perceive the world around us using our five senses of sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. Unfortunately, our five senses don't function very well as detectors. We rely mostly on our senses of hearing, sight, and touch. Our sense of hearing is greatly affected by the medium used to transmit sound. Our eardrums hear sound by sensing vibrations in the air. That means that our sense of hearing is useless if there's no transmission medium, such as in the emptiness of outer space. Even on Earth, where the medium of air is present, our ears can perceive only a limited range of sounds, from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. This is less than one-seventh the range of a dolphin. There's a lot we aren't hearing. We rely mostly on our sense of sight. We are able to see because our eyes can detect electromagnetic waves. We refer to the waves that our eyes can see as visible light, and the visible wavelength range is from 0.36 micrometers to 0.83 micrometers. To give you an idea of how narrow this range is, a gamma ray can have a wavelength anywhere from 10 to the 11 meters up to 100,000 kilometers. Our limited range of vision is like looking at the world through the eye of a needle. Some animals can see a wider range of electromagnetic waves than we can. The world must look very different indeed to them. We often tell others to see for yourself to confirm whether something is true. But the truth is that the world we see is only a tiny part of the big picture. What about our sense of touch? We're able to touch and hold things thanks to what's called electromagnetic interaction. This interaction between our bodies and other substances is what allows us to feel things when we touch them. There are some substances in the universe that generate no electromagnetic interaction with our bodies. They're actually far more common than substances that do interact in this way. We call these substances dark matter and dark energy. Let's go back to sight for a moment. Imagine that you're using a device capable of sensing electromagnetic waves of all wavelengths in order to view the world. You'd still only be able to see substances making up less than 5% of the mass of the universe. The other 95% is filled with mysterious and unidentified substances we call dark matter and dark energy. I mentioned these substances in a previous video. They don't produce, reflect, or absorb light, and they also don't generate electromagnetic interaction. In other words, our five senses are completely incapable of perceiving these substances. We can't see them, and we wouldn't even feel them if they touched our bodies. In fact, several tons of dark matter may be passing through your body right now as you watch this video. What's even scarier is that 95% of the universe consists of these substances we're incapable of sensing. It seems strange to refer to this as dark matter since it makes up such a large portion of the universe. I think we should instead be using dark to refer to the 5% of the universe we can see. The unseen world of dark matter accounts for much of the mass of the universe, and it seems possible that there might be living things made of this matter. In other words, the so-called real world that we perceive is merely that tiny part of the whole that we're capable of sensing with our five limited senses. Imagine someone with no senses at all. For him, the lights, sounds, smells, rain, snow, wind, and other things we know to be true simply wouldn't exist. Another way of looking at it is that there are many things in the world that we are incapable of perceiving. How about those tiny people seen in bolid induced hallucinations? It's certainly possible that they actually exist, but that we just can't see them. Stimulating our neural circuitry may allow us to perceive information we normally can't sense and to see things we normally can't see. If you're ever dining out and see bolites on the menu, then by all means give them a try. Just make sure they're being served at a trustworthy restaurant 
and that they've been cooked properly. Thank you for watching.